Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm here with Practical Machines today to go into some basics of G-Codes. Now we've covered a lot of complex stuff, and often I'm asked, wait, where do I start with all this? So the next few videos I'm producing for Practical Machinists is back to basics. So to get an appreciation of G-code, we have to go right back to the beginning. So back in the early 40s, this guy, Comrade Zeus, invented programming languages as we know it, the high level programming languages. That is languages we can understand and not just zeros and ones. Now in 1957, this guy, John Bacharach, he invented Fontran, which is still one of the main languages that's still used today. And if we have a look at the history of programming languages. We can see Fontran there in 1957, and just like two more down, we can see that we have G-Code invented in 1958. Now we know MIT was used in G-Code before that, but this is the first official release. So we're still using this programming language, and it was one of the first programming languages that's high level that was invented. Okay, so back when I first started machining, we used to save our programs on punch tapes. They look a little bit like this. There's two different kinds of punch tapes. Back then, copying and pasting was a lot more complicated. We needed scissors and sellotape. But that's how we used to edit our programs, miss bits out. We used to be able to read these. When I first uh, come out of my apprenticeship, I could actually read these at the time. I cannot now, I haven't used them in 30 years, but um, we learned how to read punch tapes. And the way, these punch tapes work is it takes our high level language, our G code, turns it into a low level language, machine code, and then that is understood by the machine and the chips on your CNC controls. Okay, so that's how G code started. So let's have a look at how it works. So it's all about moving in axes. It's all X, Y, Z movements at its most basic level. So this is taken from the Cartesian system. You've often seen graphs like this at school where you have uh, Y plus and X plus going up and right. Now in the middle of this, I have that circle. Now that's the datum circle, the origin point circle. Um, that's what that designates. So in the middle of our chart there, in the middle of our graph, we have zero point and we go left or below it and it becomes a minus number. And that transfers straight over to the way we work on our machine. We designate a point on our billet or our machine that is zero, and then all dimensions run from that in the Cartesian style using graphs that we're used to. So how do we move around these shapes? Well, we've got a few basic ways. I'm just gonna cover them now. So we start off with G00. Now this is our rapid travel command. Now this runs the machine or this runs the slides as fast as is allowed in the parameters. So there's no control of the speed here. It just runs at the machine's maximum speed. And to move around, we simply state which direction we're going in in an axis after the G00 command and the machine will move to it. Now, when we're cutting material, we need a bit more control over that speed. So what we do is we issue a feed rate. Now to issue a feed rate, we need to use a G01 command, which is a linear interpolation command. Now this just cuts in a straight line, but we can control it with a feed rate. Now, on continuous lines, we don't need to add the feed rate on each line. It remembers it from an active line such as this. So afterwards, we could also skip out the G01. So we could just say X minus 100, and it will move to that position if G01 and a feed rate is already stated. We can also machine radiuses and arcs. So to do that, we use G02 for a clockwise and G03 for anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, radiuses. So the way we can do that is two different ways. We have the most basic way, which is we are using an R value to designate the radius and an end point of that rad. So what this is doing here is going to Y50, we're giving it a radius, so it's going to do a linear move, a straight line move, and then perform the rad. We can also designate the center point of these radiuses by using I, J, and K values. So in this example here, I'm using I and J to say where the center point of that rad is, and then some straight line moves to approach that radius and to move away from it. This is great if we're doing complex uh, radiuses that need tangential blends, etc. But if we're just doing a right hand curve, then our value is good enough. Now there's sometimes a bit of confusion between Klein milling and conventional milling. I've seen people with um, cheap CNC home machines that cut wood, bought from China, etc. Um, 
wants to know why it's a CNC machine, but when they climb mill, they get a bad finish. Well, to climb mill, you need a rear current ball lead screw. Now, without this, the cutter is going to try to climb over the material, push into that backlash, cause a lot of vibration and dimensional inaccuracy. So we should always conventional mill if we don't have that rear current ball lead screw, even if your machine is CNC. Okay, so a CNC program, a G-code program, in its simplest form, would look a little bit like this. Now this is just a section of um, a part of program, we call it a sequence. Now by pasting lots of sequences together, we complete the part. It's a bit like a musician that's improvising music and they might have loads of licks that work in a certain key that work well together and they're just pulling that knowledge from each lick and then building a solo out of it. And that's kind of how we build a program. We look at each section, we build by tool and then we link it all together and then we can produce our part. So the program is split up into different areas. We start off at the top here um, where we're setting up our machine. We're calling up some G codes, tell it where its datum is. We're bringing the tool out, we're setting the speed. We're getting the machine ready to start cutting. Once that process is done, we then move on to movement. Now you can see here, we've got those GO1s we just spoke about, some feed rates, we've got G00s, there's X and Z movement step. There's no Y because this particular program is off a lathe, but that's how we move around. So this section is um, cutting and producing our part. Here we've got a cycle. Now this really speeds up our programming. We can call upon these cycles. In this case is a roughing cycle and it would very quickly produce our part with very little code. So we use a lot of cycles in machining and it cuts down on a lot of useless programming. <laughs> now that cycle calls upon a subroutine. Now this is going a little bit more advanced, but we can use subroutines and we can reuse them. So our roughing cycle here, it's called in this subroutine designated between the N110 and N220 there. And it'll read that and we can recall that program later for a finished pass if we require. And finally, at the end of the program, we put the cutter away. G53 is the machine datum. So we're sending the machine home. MO9 turns off the coolant. MO5 turns off the spindle. G97 puts it back into the correct uh, speeds mode. And MO1 is our optional stop. So we finish the program or we finish each sequence with a small section of program that puts the machine back to its safe state. So that is a very, very basic intro to GCO programming. The next two videos I'm making for Practical Machinists are going to go into this a little bit more and a little bit more deeper. So at the end of these few videos, you'll have a very good understanding of G-Code, ready to start learning how to program your machine. So if you want to know more about this, you can see my website over at gcodetutor.com. And I've got lots of free articles and paid courses there to teach you how to program G-Code, computer-aided design, machine shop maths, lots of machine shop skills you will learn over on my website. And you can also follow me on Instagram on at gcodetutor.com. So my Instagram is full of slides such as this, which I explained. So it's worth popping over and joining my Instagram for daily updates on GCO techniques. Okay, so I'm Mark with Practical Machinist and thank you for watching this video.